right, let's get moving. We got some James Taylor playing. It can be a little slower moving, but we're getting our blood, blood pumping. Got those shoulders going. Uh-oh, over your head. Together. To the side. Here we go. Deeply touching my emotions. Ready? I want to stop. All right. Welcome and happy Friday. I'm so glad that you are with me today. This is Mrs. Daddle coming live to you for a first grade reading. I'm so excited to see everybody today. I hope you liked our little warm up song by some James Taylor. You know what? I love upbeat songs and that's upbeat and flowing. Maybe not as fast as some of our other songs, but you can get your blood pumping in all kinds of ways. Also, you want to know a fun fact about that? my dad and i danced to that song at my wedding and it's called how sweet it is to be loved by you isn't that great so i hope that everyone has had a wonderful week um <clears throat> we have been going over standards four five six and seven with first grade and so what we've been talking about if we've been talking about phrases in a text that help to appeal to your senses and we really focused on that on Wednesday, we talked about our sense of sight, our sense of smelling, our sense of tasting, our sense of touching, and our sense of hearing. So words and stories that appeal to those senses. We all have also been talking about informational text versus literature. And when we talk about informational text, we're talking about text that tells us facts or information about something. Like we read our bats book and our bats book talked about um, all different facts about bats. It had a diagram of bats and it, it listed what parts um, bats had on their arms and their wings and their body. It also had a glossary in the back that had keywords that gave it the gave us a definition. It had indexes at the beginning that tells us where we can find the information. In our um, literature reading, we looked at books that had events, characters, and settings, and it went in an order. There was a beginning, there was a middle, and there was an end. We have also looked at fabulous illustrations and books that have helped us to give us details about the character, setting, and events. And so today we're going to be doing a little bit of that, but you know what? We're also going to just be doing a fun reading, and I'm so excited to share this book with you. The book that I want to share with you has some really great pictures, but guess what? They're not like really bold pictures that stand out, that have all kinds of color and a ton going on. But I think that the illustration in this book can help you to imagine and use your imagination um, a little bit more. And so I'm so excited. This book is a book from when I was younger, and it's been one of my favorite books. And years and years ago, someone had put this book in the discard pile. Can you believe it? They were giving this book away. And so I walked right by and I said, that is one of my favorite books. And I took it and I've kept it ever since. And I've had it in my office. And sometimes I read it and I've read it to my own kids. But what I want you to focus on, we definitely are going to talk about if this book is informational text or literature. We're definitely going to be looking at the phrases that appeal to our senses. But what I really want you to do with this book is that I want to use, want you to use this up here that has your imagination because that's what this book is about. It's about using your imagination. You know what? We have some really great tools at our um, hands. We're able to have access to computers and tablets and video games. And all of those things are awesome and wonderful to do. But you know what? There has to be a balance. You can't do that all the time. You've got to enjoy being outside and being in nature. But you've also got to enjoy the greatest thing that you have, which is this brain up here and using your imagination to take you away to fabulous places with fabulous adventures. And so that's what this book is about. And so I'm very excited to read it to you. It is called Christina, Katrina and the Box. 
So look at that. Katrina, Christina, Katrina, and the box. Are you ready? Here we go. And it is by Patricia Lee Gotch. Christina Katrina liked things. Tin cups and old dresses, worn out ties and empty boxes. And of those things, but mostly boxes. Hat boxes, bakery boxes with see-through lids, and shoe boxes. Can you see that? Do you like things? I like things. Best of all, she liked big boxes. She was so happy indeed one sleepy summer day when even her sometimes friend Fats Watson was out of town to see a truck deliverer a great deliver a great tall box. It came on a refrigerator. Oh, how grand and new, Christina's mother said, looking at the refrigerator. It is. Oh, it really is, said Christina, looking at the box. Have you ever seen a refrigerator box? They are huge. And she quickly claimed the box for her own and dragged it under the apple tree. To mother, who was very neat and tidy, it seemed the boxes were for basements or trash barrels, not for front yards under the apple tree. But she decided that it couldn't hurt. It couldn't possibly hurt for one day or two days to have a big box in the front yard there under the apple tree. Is sometimes your mom really neat and tidy and you like to drag things out and get things everywhere? Mm. That afternoon, Christina's father cut a window and a door in the box and Christina painted on turrets, a drawbridge, and bolts for the door and the box became a castle. Inside, she put sticks on the window for iron bars and she bought brought in all of her cups and saucers and a lot of Fig Newtons in case there was a battle and she couldn't get out. Look at that. So she turned that box into a castle. For two days, she and her bears lived and played in her castle peacefully. Look at that. Look at her things that she collected. Do you see that? You see her robe that she turned into a gown and the paper she turned into a crown. Uh-oh, but look who's right here. Until Fat Watson came home. He sneaked into her castle while she was out to lunch and ate all her Fig Newtons. And she locked him in until he hollered, I'm sorry, 15 times. When she finally let him out, Fat gave Christina's castle a kick and over it went, smacked, on its side. Now, was that nice? No, it wasn't. Mother came out and saw the following box. I see that's the end of the castle, Christina, she said with a smile and started to haul it off. But that's no castle, said Christina, hauling it back again. That's my clubhouse. And watch what she does. And it was. For three long days right there under the apple tree, Christina changed the windows into a door and the door into a window. She put in two benches for members and chair for the president and she painted keep out members only and danger to enemies on the outside. Look at that. Have you ever taken something that you've got in like a box or something that's plain and turn it into something else? Mm, I love her creativity. And she let Fats join. Then they met in the clubhouse, which was very dark when the door was closed and very secret. And they spit on a nickel and swore to be friends forever. And they were. Until one day when Fats got angry at always being vice president, he climbed on the clubhouse roof and promised to sit there until Christina made him president. Only the roof caved in first and Christina disbanded the club.
When mother saw the box, the, saw the satin box, she brushed her hands free. Now she would have her nice, neat yard. Well, she said, that is the end of the clubhouse, and she tugged it towards the street. But that's no clubhouse, said Christina, tugging it back again. That's my racing car, Hermione, and I'm late for a race. Poor old mother. She thought she was done with that in her yard. Before speeding off, Christina put the top on the bottom, turned the window into a cockpit, and on the sides painted two magnificent, magnificent curling silver horns, which she blasted at Fats every time she rounded the apple tree. Look at that. Look at her. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? For two days, she raced around the yard, and guess what? She won every time. Until Fat said he'd take a look at the motor. That didn't sound quite right. When he cut off the, no the nose to get to the motor, the car collapsed. That old Fats Watson, he's a little bit of a troublemaker, isn't he? Christina's mother was relieved. Well, that is the end of the racing car, she said, and she pulled the cardboard towards the trash barrel. But guess what? You got it. But that's no racing card, said Christina, pulling it back again. That's the floor of my summer mansion. I'm going to have a ball. And she did right there under the apple tree. Look what she did. She paint, She patted the box out flat and drew furniture on each flap. A stove and refrigerator for the kitchen, a bed for the bedroom, and a grand piano and a violin for the living room. So there would be music for her for her ball. Then she and her bears and fats dressed up in gowns and high heels, and they invited kings and queens and swore and some presidents and one vice president to come. And everybody came, and they danced and danced until their feet hurt, and they had to take off their shoes. Even without shoes, Christina had a wonderful time. Have you ever just had a dance party? Fun. Until Fats decided the floor needed scrubbing, he sprayed it down with a garden hose and mopped it until the floor puckered and grew lumpy and finally fell apart. When Mother came out a little later and looked at her front yard, she shook her head and said, Well, and then, is this the end of your grand floor? What floor? asked Christina, who was running by. Oh, you mean that old ragged box? Let's do throw it away. Mother breathed a sigh. At last she could have her nice, neat yard back. But quick, Christina said. Fat's mother got a washer and dryer today, and he's bringing two ships down. Now, I said my mother wouldn't mind a bit if we sailed them here in our front yard, right under our apple tree. And look at their ships. Wasn't that awesome? I love this book. And I love this book because Christina Katrina really used her imagination. She took something as simple as a box and turned it into a castle. Did you see that? I love the castle and even the inside of a castle. And then when that was destroyed, what did she do? You're exactly right. She pulled that bad boy back and she made a clubhouse. And then when the clubhouse fell apart, guess what she did? She turned it into a what? You're right, a race car. And when the race car got destroyed, what did she do? She turned it into a mansion with everything laid out. Isn't that pretty awesome that she took something that was nothing and she used her imagination. So she used what she could think of to come up with really creative and awesome things to do. So I want you to be like Christina Katrina this weekend. I want you to take something that it really probably can't be useful. And I want you to use your imagination and turn it into something wonderful that you can play with and enjoy. Get out in front of the TVs and the computers and the video games and get outside and enjoy that. One thing I used to do when I was little and I loved it and I pointed it out to my own kids on our walk the other day 
is that there was a place in the cow fields because we have cows at our house and my grandparents house was right below my house and so there was a little place um the, where a hill came up and it was kind of like where the the ground went down low behind it so it was almost like a fort and guess what my cousins and i made a fort in there and we had chairs and we made all kinds of things so that's what i like for you to do take something that couldn't be used for anything else and turn it into something that you want. That's your challenge. So I'm so glad that you enjoy Christina, Katrina, and the box. So of course I've got to end today with one of my favorite authors. Do you remember his name? You are correct. It is Shel Silverstein. And so I'm going to end with a poem today. And the name of this poem is Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. So I'm going to try to say it without getting tongue time because that is the challenge here. Are you ready? Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. Went for a ride in a flying shoe. Hooray, what fun. It's time we flew, said Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too. Ickle was cap captain and Pickle was crew and Tickle served so Coffee with mulligan stew. As higher and higher and higher they flew, Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Over the sun and beyond the blue. Hold on, stay in, I hope we do. Cried Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Never return to the world they knew. And nobody knows what's happened to dear. Ickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Fun times. So I hope that you have time this weekend to get out and enjoy the great outdoors. Take my challenge and get out and um, use your imagination with something that's laying around your house. Remember, if you would like to write a silly poem and submit it to me, I would love to read it next week. So I can't, I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you next week. Also remember, boys and girls, if nobody's told you today, guess what? I love you so very much, and I'm so glad that you're with me, and I will hopefully see you soon. Bye, guys.